<clears throat> okay, Samuel, who are you presenting to? The parents, teachers, and administrators of the U.S. education system. Okay, great. Are you ready? I am. Go. Over the past 100 years, the U.S. primary and secondary education system has not changed. We, however, have an opportunity to make one. There are two systems, the physical classroom and the virtual classroom, specifically the Khan Academy, which is a free, online, underutilized teaching, practice, and evaluation tool. My plan is to combine these two systems with the Edumice. The Edumice uses wireless, Bluetooth, and NFC technology and allows teachers to easily access the Khan Academy in the physical classroom. It allows them to view previous assessments, suggest videos and assignments for students to complete, and connect to parents via voice notes. All the while, automatically and instantaneously creating big data. Big data in the form of country statistics, school statistics, classroom statistics for teacher self-evaluation, and student statistics in the form of daily summaries sent to parents via email and text messages. So what data do we have right now in education? Maybe we know the best states at educating. What if we knew the best schools, or even better yet, the best teachers at educating? What can we learn from that? How about how fast we get that information? Maybe right now it's a year. How about instantly? That is the big data that Edubice creates. That is the big data we deserve. Thank you. I'm presenting to investors. Investors, are you ready? I am. Go. RFID is a wireless technology used to store personal information on cards. It's used by almost everyone, whether they know it or not, and some common examples include your RPI key card access cards, some credit cards, and etc. The problem with RFID cards is since you don't have to physically touch the card to read the data off of it, it's really easy to steal. Here's someone who is hitting an RFID reader inside a pocketbook, and if they were to walk by you on the street, like the 12 million people who had their identity stolen last year, you wouldn't know your data was compromised until your accounts start to drain. So current solutions to this problem, basically encase your RFID cards in metal. It's kind of like carrying a safe around in your pocket. It's bulky and inconvenient to use. Our solution is a smartphone case and app system, which means it's readily usable by the 140 million people who already have smartphones. The way it works is, you take out your smartphone, you hit a button, you scan in, and then your data is safe. It's only turned on when you need it to be, and not when someone's trying to steal it. Also, you can store your entire wallet's worth of RFID cards on your smartphone case, so you don't need to carry them around anymore. With the secure RFID wallet, you get safety through convenience. Lara, who are you presenting to? Good afternoon, uh, investors. Investors, okay, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> go. Thermopolymer strip. Don't you hate it when you go to the beach and all of a sudden it's cloudy? But you decide to play volleyball anyway, disregarding protection from the sun, just because you're not going to get a tan. Then all of a sudden, you get a burn. And it gets worse. And then, one in 50 people, every hour, get diagnosed with skin cancer. Let's make it stop. This can be simply eradicated by taking a, sim a regular sunscreen bottle and placing a thermopolymer strip on it. What happens is, is the electromagnetic waves from the sun interact with the clear strip, and the dye molecules are provoked and display a variety of colors when UV is present. 30 million people suffer from skin cancer currently in the United States, more than breast cancer and prostate cancer right now. This issue can be eradicated by the thermopolymer strip. It can be placed on any surface area. Mothers can now sleep easily, knowing that their children are protected under any weather conditions. Elderly people can walk outside and look at their wristwatch, even though it's cloudy, and know that you need to put on sunscreen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's enjoy our summer. Let's have a carefree summer. Thank you. The Thermopolymer I'm presenting to potential investors, and if everybody could please direct their attention to the first slide. Okay, are you ready? That's it. Go. Imagine if that was your son or grandson who just experienced one of the nearly 3.8 million concussions sustained each year by U.S. athletes. Now I'm going to pose a question to you. Which one of these brain cells would you rather have? Um, hopefully you chose the one on the left, because the one on the right is a brain cell from an NFL player who suffered from chronic traumatic encephalopathy, 
You may have heard it recently being linked to the deaths of two prominent NFL players, Junior Seau and Ray Easterling. Well, what's amazing about this degenerative brain disease is that it could be knocked out of sports as we know it if we would just pay attention to our high school physics lessons. If we increase the amount of time during a collision, we are effectively and proportionally decreasing the average force sustained by the user. Now, what I'm proposing is a paradigm shift in the way in which we think of helmets. If we eliminate the outer ridge, uh, the rigid structure of the helmet, and instead replace it with ballistic gelatin, or ballistic gelatin-like structure, something that is very good at deforming under impact, then we can uh, knock out this, uh, this uh, injury. Um, and what I'm proposing is not only utilizing this technology within the 4.2 million users of football helmets, but also beyond that, encompassing all contact sports, and perhaps even the military. And I know this sounds obvious, I know this sounds very simple, but the fact of the matter is this is not being used in industry today. This is, in fact, a game changer. I call this abscess. Today I'm proud to present self-healing bioglass, patent pending and winner of the RPI Change the World competition. So we all know that glass breaks, yet for the past 5,000 years we have chosen to do nothing about that. I'm about to change things. Self-healing bioglass is a revolution in material science. Self-healing bioglass contains chitosan, which is a polysaccharide that is found in the shells of crustaceans. It also contains oxetin, which is an organic compound that is strongly attracted to chitosan molecules in the presence of UV radiation. Should the resulting chitosan oxetin bonds break, they have the ability to heal themselves in the presence of sunlight. And this is a proven chemical reaction. By integrating the resulting chitosan oxetin bond networks within a bioactive glass, I propose a fully self-repairable display technology. If the display breaks, simply place it in the sun for 30 minutes, and the sun will heal the glass. This would create a new industry with no current competition. Self-healing bioglass has tremendous monetary potential. No consumer is going to buy a smartphone with a traditional display if they can have one with a self-healing display at no additional cost. Self-healing bioglass would tap into a market a, of 1.5 billion smartphones valued at $39.5 billion. Self-healing bioglass has tremendous potential in other industries as well. Please join me in investing in the glass of the future. Thank you. Self-healing glass for phones is, you know, that's, that was just an amazingly brilliant idea. And I, you know, I applaud you for, uh, for that one. And, you know, if you've really got something that, that it can work like that, not only the, you know, you have to figure out how to get into the new phones, but also the retrofit market. You know, it's just enormous, you know, enormous. I want to introduce you to a revolution in the ways of protecting our structures and ourselves against earthquakes. In our current technology, earthquakes is happening all around the world. So our current technology hasn't been uh, sufficient enough. So we have a lot of uh, different uh, damages caused by earthquakes. So I am giving you a new generation of seismic protection devices developed by me. It's RV Maps. They are the first rotational based mechanical device that exists, and they uh, can change their properties completely without any need of source of powers. They can be implemented inside the bridges or buildings for the new constructions or existing structures. Uh, I have a lot of numerical simulation of the device and also. Uh, experimental model, which is a working prototype in front of me, uh, and it showed that uh, this device can reduce the amount of forces by up to 60%. So, uh, in order to compare this device with other existing devices, which are something like shock absorbers in your cars, or the ones which use uh, controllers or sensors to change their properties, I should say that our maps are relatively low cost, they are uh, reliable, and uh, effective, and also they are easy to build. So uh, I have uh, invention disclosure to OTC, and I have provisional patent on the device. So please join me to uh, develop this further and support this idea to help humans. Potential tracking device. Who are you presenting to, Megan? Potential investors and organizations like. Alzheimer's organization. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Go. By the end of my pitch, another 22 people have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Last year was my grandma's turn. As devastating as this news was to my family, we suspected it was coming. We noticed in her actions and we saw it in her eyes. 
In the early stages of Alzheimer's, people routinely misplace possessions. They get anxious and even suspicious of those they trust. As they lose confidence, they begin to withdraw from the things they like and the people they love. This is unacceptable. Something must be done to help. Mindful dementia tracking is a device that makes it easier to keep track of important items, such as a purse, wallet, keys, or glasses. It has two essential capabilities, to locate misplaced items and to log the progression of dementia for, for family and medical reference. It, ha it consists of transmitters attached to personal items and a receiver worn as a wristband. When a button on the receiver is pressed, the corresponding object will beep, flash, or give verbal directions. Here. An online platform will create a history log of usage, allowing family members to view the location of the object and to monitor changes in habits. The technology exists, but has yet to be implemented in a low-cost, massively scalable and easily adaptable way. Mindful dementia tracking helps relieve some of the fear, frustration, and uncertainty associated with cognitive decline. It is a simple solution to one piece of a devastating problem, helping my grandma and countless others like her who struggle to hold on to normalcy. Thank you. Okay, our next presenter is Catherine Harmon. Her idea is sudden, sudden infant death syndrome, alarm vest. Go. I'm gonna start with a story. Now, Anna is a healthy three-month-old baby. She smiles, cries, rolls over, and is just now starting to grab at objects nearby. Her parents put her to bed like any other night, but when they awaken, their lives change. The devastating reality is that 2,500 babies die each year from, from SIDS, which causes babies to stop breathing. Anna barely had a shot at life, but what if we could prevent that? Current competitions such as the SIDS mat and the SIDS sock do exist, but they are expensive, fall prone to false alarms, and do not address prevention. My invention, The Guardian, serves to be there for babies like Anna when parents cannot. Utilizing the lightweight vest, it accelerometers within the lightweight, accelerometers within the vest monitor breathing. If, if breathing is stops for more than 20 seconds, a CPR, uh, okay, I'm gonna just stop here. If breathing stops for 20 seconds, for more than 20 seconds, a vibrate function serves to nudge the baby. If breathing is not regained within three more seconds, a CPR device serves to um, simultaneously give CPR to the infant, as well as alert parents and medical personnel. When breathing stops, every second counts. Don't let another, don't let another life be cut short by a tragedy. The, the, the a guardian, will allow parents to sleep as peacefully as the babies. Thank you. If you've ever purchased furniture before, then you've probably experienced the frustration of trying to find the perfect piece of furniture for your room based on only images you see online or seeing it in a showroom. Take, for instance, trying to buy a new couch for this room. Well, which one of these couches, or any of these couches, is going to look the best? And say you also wanted to buy a new TV and maybe change the paint color too. The number of choices can overwhelm the consumer and paralyze them from making any purchase. There's simply no good way for them to visualize how all these items are going to look together in their home. That's why I'm creating Virtual Product Demos. It's a software package that allows users to virtually redecorate their home with real-life items all in the matter of a few minutes. To start, users use a smartphone and scan the room, taking images that are then sent to our cloud computers to be analyzed and turned into a complete virtual 3D model of their home and everything in it. From there, on any connected device, they can access it and edit it by moving around their existing items and inserting furniture from a product database that they are interested in. And finally, users can actually walk through their virtual room using augmented reality technology to uh, essentially turn your phone or your tablet into a window between the real room and the virtual one. With virtual product demos, the consumer's room becomes the showroom, and that gives them complete certainty in what they're buying. Thank you. Okay, we all can move right along. Darwin Pomerick, ortho, graph, biomolecular, bone substitute, right? Right. Okay, 40% and two. Investors in the medical device industry. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Go. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Atar Pondrick, and I'm the founder of Orthograph. We provide patient-centric solutions to musculoskeletal tissue regeneration. 
Now, how many of you are aware of an individual who has suffered from an osteoporotic fracture either of the hip, the spine, or the radius? Apparently, these fractures are very common. A third of women and a fifth of men over the age of 50 worldwide are at risk. If you magnify bone, it looks like a wall of bricks in organization. If you think of bone fracture as a crack or a gap in the wall, then the role of a bone substitute is to repair that crack and restore bone to its original structural and functional state. However, current products are inadequately designed material-wise to do that job because the bone-forming cells that actually make bone do not feel at home on these materials. Orthograph develops and commercializes novel, nature-inspired bone substitutes for a faster, stronger, and most importantly, safer fracture healing, keeping in mind our vision, which is being patient-centered. Our designer proteins give bone an organized structure and mechanical rigidity. And it is using these proteins that we are developing a technology platform and materials that can be injected into the site of fracture, attract bone forming cells, and restore it to its original structural and functional state. Who benefits? Insurers, doctors, and of course patients who spend far less time in hospitals. Thank you very much. <laughs> Who are you presenting to? Uh, we're presenting to students, faculty, and educators at top universities. Are you ready? We are. Go. Two ingredients we believe necessary to make dream projects a reality are effort and forte, which is why we named our website at forte.com. Our focus isn't about school projects, businesses, or startups. It's about college students and their dream projects. From which we've seen, every single college student has the ideas and talent to change the world but almost none ever had a team to make it happen. People come in all different shapes and sizes with different skills, skill levels, and interests, and it's not always clear how these fit together. With Aforte, all you have to do is make a profile of your skills and projects, let Aforte's algorithm do its magic, and find you a team. Oops. A, lot of, a lot of services do something similar, but there's nothing out there that offers everything that college students like us need. Uh, basically, we're trying to do the skill search what Google did to document search. Before Google, there was AltaVista, a giant search engine that returned search results based on the words in a web page. But then came Google that started to take into account the network of web pages. Let's go back to skill search. If you search for a skill on LinkedIn, you're going to get search results based on the words in a person's profile. And this is where Forte comes in. We're revolutionizing skill search by not only taking into account people as words in a profile, but how they're connected to each other through projects. So what did we do about it? We've built our website, we've shared our private beta, and most importantly of all, we've started making dream projects a reality. This has been a four day. You have the dream. We'll make the team. <laughs> I have to say, I have a clear idea of what each of you present and what you're doing, what your businesses are. And if I had a big fat wallet, I would probably invest money in all of your ideas. So I want to encourage all of you to continue to pursue what is your passion. If you are really serious about the ideas you presented here, every one of you did a great job. So I just want to say congratulations. And I hope that some of you continue and decide to create companies and businesses. And if you do, come and see me, and I'd be glad to help you in any way I can to promote your idea and turn it into a viable business. Everybody else, all I can say is really well done. And I too, just, just like you said, saw some amazing presentations. They were all really phenomenal. And you know, it was so hard because you just got sucked into the, the wonder of the product. And I know we're not supposed to be scoring or grading on the product. You were all fantastic, really. And I'll tell you when I went to school, I don't think there was a person who could get up and come close to you guys. So I think it's just a tribute to A, the education you can and the fact that you guys did a great job individually. It's just a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So that's a, a tremendous compliment for you folks in terms of, of really being able to present. And so here today, as, as was said already, I clearly you know, came away with a good understanding of, of what you are all about. And I found the stories hugely compelling, which is also a great compliment. I really felt compelled to, to find out what do we need to do to get this launch started? What's the next round for you? you know, where do you really take it next? So again, kudos, kudos to that. I think just all in all, this was amazing. Wow, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Michael, you spent a lot of time explaining a problem that you didn't need to explain. Okay, it was it, we could we got it right up front, so you lost valuable time that you could have used somewhere else. Megan, watch out for microphones. 
they do a lot of distortion to people's voices, and women are especially victimized by microphones. You had a great technique, and it was clear, but the microphone was playing tricks with your voice. And the only reason I share that with you is because when you use a mic in the future, you have to figure out where you stand in relation to that microphone. Slada, you have to enunciate a little more. When you're doing something real fast, it's important to move your mouth because otherwise nobody knows what you're talking about. And again, the villain is this. It, 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 it warps, distorts your voice. These things are dangerous tools. They work for you and they work against you. The one thing I felt that I missed in a lot of these, and I think it was in the, the very last uh, item on the score sheet, was the, the opportunity. You know, some of these guys really didn't talk about how big the opportunity was. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of it you could guess or you could feel it, um, but I, I sort of thought that that was missing. Um, I also felt that some of them, it took too long in the intro. You know, I think we said the same thing. You know, you intro it, you sort of got it. And you know, if you're, you're really pushing on an ele elevator pitch, the first sentence or two, you should really understand what the problem is. And I think some guys, or some of the presentations, and maybe I, you know, I can pick on Evan, like I thought he had a phenomenal idea, but I didn't get the payoff until you know, three quarters of the way through it. You know, in, in doing these things and in pitching your, your ideas and your presentation, Make sure it's really clear in that first sentence of, of what you do. Uh, some some stre uh, strengthening in terms of presentation. Uh, some of you had, not all, but some had good numbers up front of your presentation to indicate why there was a demand for this. But again, the home run would have been to help explain how you produced this, in other words, dream on to the end of the, the dream. Uh, some of your topics were, were fairly technical. I understand that. Obviously, we, we, we raised nerds here, so it's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, they're not all out there. And so as you, you bring your topics, unless you have a very well-targeted audience, although many of you chose investors, that does not imply that they're necessarily technically uh, well-versed in the particular area you're bringing to light. So in terms of your media, media choices and or your terminology, you may literally need to break it down you know, for, their, uh, for their benefit. Watch your pacing. And although, of course, you're trying to avoid being the first to break the four-year stretch here in terms of the buzzer, some of you could do a little uh, slower pacing, uh, obviously I'll dump a little material to make time for that.